remember that orchestration is not just a question of color, but in the orchestra in particular, it is a question of presence and it is a question of weight, of presence and of weight. Perhaps the best examples that we have of this in music are violin concerti. You know, the first, the, the, the solo violin always sounds closer to us and more present than the body of strings, than if they have mutes on, than if they are playing harmonics. And we can go back and forth with these in a kind of, of, of what sounds to us like a three-dimensional sound space, right? That we have the solo, the group, with mutes, with harmonics, we can, we can do this with sound. Uh, very obvious examples of this. If you look at the Scherzo of Mahler's Second Symphony, where there are two violin solos, the concertmaster and the uh, assistant concertmaster, associate concertmaster, who are playing violin. One of them is playing a violin that's been tuned up a whole major second. So it's just like, it's, it's like really in your face, as it were, in your ear. And the other one, which is a little bit behind, and so the piece goes in this scherzo that sounds um, almost queasy in, in the way that it's playing with, with space. Now, so much of presence and weight is determined by uh, acoustical phenomena, of course, but also by register and also by the number of people who are playing something at one time, even if they're playing softly. So if I play for you on this very nice Yamaha piano as well as I possibly can, this D major triad, it sounds okay, but it's not really going to take you anywhere musically. But if you play this on three trumpets, well, on a C trumpet, this is actually our first good note, right? Because we have, well, right? Those are, those are our fingerings and we blow, we, we, we blow on our overtone series above that. This is our fundamental to here. So this is our first fingering, which is doubled and used, you know, our gut and our, and you, so it's our first twelfth. And you think it would be the first good note, but somehow it's not. It's this one. This is the first good note on the C trumpet, at which, which you can play fortissimo, and you can play piano, and you can play all of those things in Scheherazade that go which if you did here would and here impossible and would be flabby and terrible. Here is our first great note. So we have presence, we have weight, we have consistency of color through that triad because no one is in a different register and it sounds great. Now, if you use your inner, like use the, use the ear of your imagination, put that on three trombones and it sounds like a million dollars. It's actually the chord that's at the end of Brahms' second symphony. And it's not unlike the difference between listening to a women's choir, woman, women's choir sing these notes, which are fantastic and perfectly within their range and, you know, avoid the passaggio more or less. And it's going to be really nice. But men's choir do this, man, it's going to have a completely different sound, this elevated sound and very, very present even though the weight of that women's, woman's choir or the weight of those three trumpets might be the same. See what I mean? Now, again, three flutes. Fantastic, man. They're, we're all in the same register. We've got this plushy, warm sound, and you've got somebody like Mark McGregor 
we, there are all of these beauty tricks that flutists use to be able to play low and loud, and everyone will use them, and it will sound absolutely marvelous, but it will have neither presence nor weight, unless you've got one of these freak flute players who can cut. They exist. Three bassoons. Everybody's in the same register. Nobody's too high. This F sharp is good. So it's, even though that's the wolf tone, it's gonna sound absolutely marvelous. You put it on three clarinets. Well, then this note is in a different register than these notes, and it'll sound perfectly okay and pastoral, and it'll sound just like something out of a minor symphonist, you know, that, that sounds perfectly fine. But Beethoven wouldn't do it. It would be in the same register, and you can't do it. This note is going to be different. And these things seem like very, very small things. But in fact, in orchestra music, much more than in chamber music, the richness of detail of notation, every diminuendo, every dynamic, everything. It's like Claude Vivier used to say, and which he parodies in his, in his piece for, for clarinets and, and voices with tape. What's it called? Prelude pour, pour Marco Polo, where he has the voice go, La richesse de la taille. And with this laugh, like the Count Chocula, you know, from, from, when, from when you were a kid. Burn, the great thing about Claude Vivier saying it is that it, it, it burns into your, <laughs> into your mind, you know. The richness of detail, the richness of detail is what makes orchestra music great. And it has to do with presence and weight more than it does with color, although color is important. And that's how to write for orchestra.